If you've been using Windows, the Mac OS, or even a Linux distro that is designed similarly to one of them, you've probably tried deleting a file by dragging it into the recycle bin or pressing delete on the file to place it there and then emptying out the recycle bin. But this method of file deletion doesn't actually delete the file. And to understand why, we need to take a closer look at how these operating systems handle storage and access to files. So when you have a mechanical hard drive, your files and folders are stored in what are called sectors of the spinning disk. And each one of these sectors has enough space for about 512 bytes. And Windows, the Mac OS, and Linux keep track of what sectors have data in them and what data is in those sectors by using pointers. And a pointer works kind of like a directional sign that tells you something is located in a specific place. So the pointer doesn't actually represent the file itself or the data that is in it, but rather it just represents where you would find this file or this data. So when you delete a file on the operating system, you're not actually deleting the file itself. What you're actually doing is you're deleting the pointer that tells you where that file is. And this is why from the file system standpoint, when you delete a file or you drag it into a recycle bin and then empty it, the file would appear to be deleted. If you tried to search for it after doing this or you know, look for it using normal GUI methods or command line methods, you wouldn't be able to do so. However, there are file recovery programs and digital forensic tools which are specially designed to find and restore files that have had their pointers deleted. So the file is not completely gone until all of the sectors that stored that specific file that made up the data in that file have been populated with new data. Now, this will happen over time with regular use of your computer. If you're installing new files, new programs, or if you're just downloading stuff on the internet, or if you're generating files through recording or whatever. But it's not really recommended since you don't have any control over what sectors this data gets written to. Your computer just picks that automatically on its own. And what would most likely happen if you tried to overwrite your data by just using your computer normally is that the files that previously existed would just become corrupted or distorted in some way, but not fully overwritten and deleted. Take these images, for example. These were photographs taken by Melanie Wilhide, whose laptop had the images, whose laptop that the images were on was stolen. So the thief had this laptop in his possession for a little while, and he used it for a little bit. And in the process, he ended up deleting some of her photos and then partially overwriting them through his regular use. And this is the result. So you can see that these photos have lost some of their color information and they have some distortions, but you can still clearly tell what these photos are of. So now on to the reason why you clicked on this video, how to actually delete files from your hard drive. First, you want to go ahead and delete them through the normal methods and then empty the recycle bin. Then you'll want to want to run a program that wipes the free space on your hard drive, like Bleachbit. So wiping the free space is a process in which every free sector of your hard drive, meaning each one of those that doesn't have a pointer indicating that there is a file or some type of data in it, it's going to get overwritten with some zeros. And then it's going to remove those zeros from it. Now this doesn't free up any additional free space on your hard drive, it just resets those sectors and makes it impossible for data to be recovered from them. And Bleachbit also includes a shred function which will delete and then automatically overwrite the sectors that a file was stored in for you without needing to wipe all of the free sectors of the hard disk. 
And some free space deletion tools will give you different methods of overriding the free space. Uh, mainly, they'll have a n different number of rounds that you can overwrite free space with. They might give you three times, 10, or even 35 cycles of overwriting the free space. But all of this is really unnecessary. If you want to delete a file, you only need to overwrite those sectors one time, and then it's impossible to recover anything from it. There's just no need to do three or 10 or especially 35 times of overwrites. So far, so far, I've been talking about hard disk because the process of wiping a free space on an SSD is a little bit different. Some programs will still give you the option to wipe the free space on solid state drives, but this isn't really recommended because it doesn't actually accomplish a full file deletion and it also reduces the lifespan of the SSDs since most solid state drives can't handle as many write cycles as a hard disk. If you really wanted to wipe free space on an SSD, you should use the trim function, which tells the solid state drive to delete unused pages. However, this is not completely infallible either, and the most recommended approach to securing data on a solid state drive is to encrypt it with full disk encryption. That way, if the drive is ever stolen, or if you just end up recycling the drive, then any data that is on it is going to be unrecoverable without that encryption key. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to share it with any friends, family, or local politicians who would benefit from file deletion, and be sure to like and subscribe with the notification bell on. Bye now.